What's going on, vile file lis- listeners? Listeners. Oh wow, smooth. Nailed it. <laughs> uh, welcome to another exciting episode. Uh, Kaylin is with us. Kaylin Miller Keys. So progressive with the hyphenation. Yes. You never asked her why. Hmm. Not Gotta that she needs a back. reason, re- but I was curious. It's, yeah. If, you know, if she's from the South, mm-hmm. probably more non-traditional in the South. Mm-hmm. Anyways, Kaylin Miller Keys is with us. Very exciting episode. It's uh, raw. It's real. Yeah. It's exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, I really enjoyed the, uh, the conversation with her. Yeah. And I felt like it was the first time she's really had a really long honest conversation about her past her experience in the show the ups and downs yeah the relationship with dean i really related to her she was talking about how she's more of an introvert and an observer which kind of makes me understand her better as watching her on tv is that she take a takes a step back and watches yeah. and tries to figure it out yeah and she kind of and as a result people can judge her for like kind of her facial expressions which i know i i I, right and then you get in your head and then you make things bigger than they are and then it all comes out it's a it's a fun episode we also have a big announcement to make oh you guys are gonna love this it's a really great announcement but before we talk about the announcement i want to talk about bed sheets yes which have nothing to do with the announcement (laughs) uh you know they're making bed sheets out of bamboo Actually, I didn't before Etitude. I didn't know that. I thought you just I had to get regular cotton. Didn't bed know that, but I gotta tell you, bamboo bed sheets. Yes. Mind blowing. Tell me why. Well, they're they're well, well the, the the just the fact that they're bamboo blows your mind. Yes. But then you feel them, and you're like, how are these this soft? Oh. Um. It's it's really fascinating the science behind it, and then obviously they're very comfortable. Anti uh, my, how do micro- anti microbial? Microbial. Mm-hmm. My sister knows a lot about that. I, I good don't for your much. skin too. If you great break for out. your skin. Um, also, I am a sweater, which is very uh, sexy. Good to know. <laughs> but I'm excited because I got some attitude sheets, and it regulates your body temperature. I hate being hot when I'm sleeping. Yeah. Me too. I know. So these are great for that. Very cute colors as well. Well, that, and which is obviously very important. Very important. Arguably, maybe the most important. <laughs> um, so you guys check it out. They are a great. They're again bamboo. Also, great conversation. Yeah. Topic. Uh, you're gonna love them. Super comfortable. Thirty day risk free trial. Thirty day risk free trial. Attitude sheets. They're soft as silk, breathable as linen, but at the price of cotton. <gasps> mm. Wow. You, or that special someone you're going to buy them for, are going to love them. And right now, our listeners will get 20% off their sheets set. Mm. And free shipping. Just text FILES to 64000. Mm-hmm. The only way to get 20% off your set of attitude sheets and free shipping is to text FILES, F-I-L-E-S, to 64000. Text F-I-L-E-S to 64,000 for some amazing, breathable, soft, wonderful bamboo sheets. So tell me, um, how are you liking your figs pants? I'm loving my figs pants. They're very trendy. They're very trendy and stylish. As we talked about with our good friend, Becca Tilly, when you dress like a doctor or nurse, (laughs) people tend to like respect you more. Yeah. I've noticed this in public. You can't not be grateful when you see someone in scrubs. Right? And for those people who don't ask, are you a doctor or don't know who I am? I get this little bit of a, a lift, but also more importantly, they're very comfortable, yes. very stylish. I, you don't feel like you're wearing scrubs in a sense of yes. like, you don't feel they, they're, they are very stylish mm-hmm. uh, and they're great for, I mean, I pretty much for the most part wear them around the house. Yes. Or uh, traveling. Um, and tra- they're great for traveling. But you know, the holidays are coming up. This is a great gift for people, you know, who work in hospitals, who need to wear scrubs, but you want to kind of. Give them something, a nice treat yeah, for so all they, can, they do. So they can feel like they are dressing up still for work while yeah. being doctors and nurses and healthcare providers. So yes. Anyone who has that special friend or loved one who is in the medical field, this is a perfect gift. And anyone who isn't, it's still actually a pretty, uh, pretty yeah. good. So whether you are one of these awesome humans that works in healthcare, 
or someone that just wants to say thanks to these deserving folks, Figs is going to make that easy by providing you with 15% off your first purchase by using my code V-I-A-L-L. Get ready to love your scrubs. Head to wearfigs.com, W-E-A-R-F-I-G-S.com, and enter my code V-I-A-L-L at checkout. You're going to love them, Figs. (laughs) Simple but effective. He just made that last part up. That was funny. So the big announcement. This is crazy. Well, I mean, not crazy. A little. Everyone knows. I mean, not everyone, but for those of you who don't, uh, Caitlin has asked me to be a guest on her live show. Uh, off the Vine. Off the Vine. And she has her uh, live tour, one in LA. And yeah. so I am the guest for that and show. Blake is DJ. Blake is DJing. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> I mean, especially after this episode. I mean, I'm, have you and Caitlin even talked that much? Not, not a ton. Not a ton. Um, but yeah, so Caitlin has her live show. I'm going to be her guest. And that records on, on Thursday the 14th. If you're in LA, uh, get tickets. If you want to fly here, I think it's going to be interesting. I don't know what to expect. A lot of potential variables at this live show. Oh, yeah. Anything can happen the, when you're live. Yeah, the, the, I mean, my big question, I'm a little nervous. I, I think I'm not nervous about Caitlin. Is Jason going to be there? I don't know. Uh, you don't know. I hope so. Jason's cool. Yeah. But like, is it, it going to be a crowd full of Caitlin stands? Do the Caitlin stands like me? Do they not like me? I don't really know. So many things to consider. If she likes you, her stands will like you. So can you answer that question? I, I think we're, we're fine. We're doing yeah. Claire's podcast. So then you'll be good. Bigger announcement. Caitlin is going to be on my podcast. We're going to be recording that on the 12th. So we'll actually have recorded our before. episode before the live show and that's where you're gonna get deep and dirty well because my understanding from caitlin is that her live show is kind of like uh um like a variety hour it's yeah, a show it's fun. and it's a fun lighthearted thing so um and then caitlin's gonna be on mine and we'll have a more of a vile files discussion about life and are who- you gonna ask her some tough questions i don't know my intention is not to uh, no, I, this is meant to have a fun, okay. lighthearted discussion. Right. But I'm assuming we're going to talk about life and you can everything. You get real? I hope so. Yeah. Right? You know, but it's not It's not meant to be contentious be like, in any way. Why did you write this Instagram no. post on oh, no. June 12th? No, we're totally, we're totally cool. But I hope it's, uh, it's been a long time coming. So I'm looking forward to it. I think Caitlin is as well. So am I. That's going to air. Uh, air Caitlin's going to air first on the 14th. Mm-hmm. And then the episode with No, Cant- hers is going to air right. on the 19th. On the 19th. And ours will air the next day on next the 20th. Day. So you'll get the, you're going to start with the fun. live, fun, lighthearted Caitlin variety hour live show. And then we'll get into the weeds on Wednesday. Mm. Weeds Wednesday. <laughs> but it. Yeah, it should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I hope she brings me a scrunchie. I'll tell her to bring some scrunchies and some wine and and yeah. and whatever. Um, so yeah, I think it should be pretty fun. I'm looking forward to it. It's yeah. been a long time coming. A lot of people have asked for it. I asked for it. I know. I, I've asked for it. <laughs> there was some hard negotiating yeah. back and forth. Um, no, but it should be a lot of fun. So a heavy dose of Nick and Caitlin on the week of whatever that is <laughs> november 18th right before the holidays clear your calendars clear your calendars and it's going to be two very different shows yes right? exactly so you're going to want two different to conversations you're yeah. going to want to listen to both yeah. uh, i'm excited about it so yeah. mark your calendars yeah. blake will be at the live show i uh are you gonna i'm fine with blake i just like as as you'll listen to this episode i have some criticism right um I'll, I don't think Blake's a bad guy. I think Blake's a great, great guy. Right. I think he's had a tough experience. I think he made some mistakes. I didn't appreciate how he handled some of his mistakes. Right. But I mean, I know he wasn't thrilled with some of my comments. Oh, you know that? How do you know that? Well, we have mutual friends. Oh. Yeah. I don't think he appreciated my opinion. Oh, yeah. So that should be fun. But don't you feel like everyone should be able to criticize people's actions? You're not criticizing the person. Uh, I do. Uh, Rachel and I talked about yes, this on, right. on, on her Happy podcast. Happy hour. Check that, that out, everybody. I, uh, yes. I think, you know, listen, we're all sensitive. I'm sensitive. No one likes to be criticized. Yeah. Sometimes we feel like when we do get criticism from people that aren't like our close friends, right? Uh, we feel attacked and then we feel like it's coming from a place of them not liking us. Personal. It, it feels personal. So I get all that, but it's often not, uh, especially exactly. in... in um, certain situations where it's not like, oh, I don't, I have a vibe about Blake or someone else on the. Right. It was like, no, there were no. specific things that it was like, 
I don't like that he did that. Yeah. Or I don't like he did that. Yeah. You know, and it's all fine. Yeah. Um, but it should be fun. It should be a fun. Uh, oh, I cannot wait. So I encourage you to go buy uh, support Caitlin's show, buy her tickets, um, so she can make more money on the live show. Yeah. I mean, I'm not getting anything from it. I'm just getting <laughs> the enjoyable experience of oh. spending time Aww. with Caitlin Bristow Aww. at her live show. You guys do have a special connect, Sean. Do we? Don't you? I don't. I don't want to even say we have a connection anymore. Oh, okay. Uh, we haven't really not had. We've had uh, one phone conversation. That we I mean, talked you're about. good together. You, you know. No, we're cool. Yeah. But we haven't hung out in any okay. way. Right. There was the wedding that we were both at, which yeah. was interesting. And then why? And, and she why? called me after. Well, maybe maybe we will get into it. Maybe we won't get okay. into okay. it. Okay. I don't okay. know. Save it for the pod. Uh. And. So we haven't talked that much. Okay. okay. Um, we she called me that one. She right. reached out after like we kind of like things come to a head of our frustrations, right. and, and it was, she was very I said gracious on the phone and kind of apologized, and it was after post her and Sean, and uh, but so we haven't really communicated. Yeah. Okay. So it was just Halloween, and I kept. I'm just laughing at Jared and Ashley's Halloween. A little much. It's. Is, you think much? it's much? It's a lot of much. But I don't know if they're going anywhere or they're just dressing up for Instagram. I'm pretty sure it's the latter. They don't go out <laughs> at all. They much. don't? They go, to, they go to events. Yes. Uh, but they're not like, they don't go to a ton of parties. I, maybe they did. Yeah. Um, it's a, totally a lot. But here's the thing about Ashley and Jared. That's <laughs> them. They love it. Like... Does I don't, Jared love it or does oh Ashley my, love it? Oh my, no, Jared probably loves it more. What? They mutually love it together. So <laughs> while not for me, and it kind of like, I would hate it. I would truly, truly hate it. I'm trying to I that. hope that I'm lucky enough to find someone who likes to do corny things that I personally like as much as I do. Like they obviously both mutually love that. Right. It's a lot. It's a little weird. And right. They, I mean, they're full on reenacting I love my favorite the, part about their costume is they'll have their costumes and then the last slide will be like, just in case you didn't know who we were, <laughs> here's how accurate our costumes are. Yes, yes. Uh, no, it's great. Were I'm there great. four different ones? I saw, wait, I saw, there was a Tom Brady one. There yeah. was the Twilight, uh, Twilight one. <laughs> there was Which the, Jared there was the, uh, there was the, uh, the, the, uh, Stars Born one. Stars Born one. Mm -hmm. That's, I think those are the three I saw. Yeah. A little heavy. They went a little heavy. <laughs> but no, but they both fuck. And Jared might like it the most. Easily. Oh my goodness. Without question. Oh my goodness. So funny. I think I think I think Ashley likes to dress up. Jared likes the reenactment. Jared Jared could have been a good actor. Jared he wanted still to still could. J Jared's also not a risk taker. I would. Oh. I hope Jared he does. But Jared Jared has talent, and I think Jared always wanted to act. And oh. I think I think he's. Uh, I think he should. I agree. Yeah. Uh, but he's he's late. he's good. He's uh, and he loves it. I not, he, <laughs> he loves. Oh it. yeah, you guys used to dress up together, huh? And you didn't wear wigs and stuff in that little. Oh yeah, thing. yeah. Um, rough week in Bachelor Nation for a breakup. Dropping like flies, man. It's you think fine. they were waiting for each other to announce so that they would feel okay doing it? I don't think so. Oh okay. Uh. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, listen, it, all jokes aside, it's tough. Um, JPJ is moving here, but they're not going to be together. I thought he has moved. Oh, has he? I don't know. I know a casting director who uh, auditioned him. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Said he did fine. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think anyone's really shocked about the JPJ or Tasha. A little bit more shocked about Demi and Christian, but... Yeah. Listen, it's really hard, and uh, for all the people who have opinions and, and criticize, uh, just a reminder that they... They are real relationships and there's real feelings and, but it's also really hard. And as we, we know with this show, people break up all the time. Yeah. Uh, people, uh, get into relationships with the best of expectations and hopes and dreams and sincerity, and it still doesn't work out and it doesn't mean they're full of shit and it doesn't mean they're disingenuous. So just remember that. So we got Chris and Katie left and we got who else? Hannah and Dylan. Oh yeah. Hannah and Dylan. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Oh, Dean and Kalen. Oh yeah, Dean and Kalen. Yeah, our guest. Shockingly. Yeah. Shockingly. Who would have <laughs> who would have thought the couple that survives it all? Yeah. We need to get to the Kalen episode, but I just wanted to say quick before we do, I just want to thank you, Nick, so much for um using the podcast to raise money for cystic fibrosis and just to raise awareness like it means so much to me and it was so kind of you oh well, happy to do it and thank you those listeners who have donated so their many money. people have donated our, li over 
live event is this Friday. Yeah, this Friday. If you want to so buy a ticket and if come. If you want to buy tickets and come, we'll be there. Also, we still haven't reached our goal. Right. So we'd love to get a few more donations. We're and at buy a 2, few. $2,000. So we need like $3,000 more. <laughs> we need $3,000. We can do it. I, of course we can do it. We of course we can do it. Hundreds of thousands of people listening to this yeah. show. Everyone can donate a dollar. Yeah. And we can do it. And Lauren Zima is going to host the event. Lauren Zima is going to be Open bar. Yeah. Free food. Free food. And um, like my sister, she's kind of been sick lately. Uh, she's a doctor in, uh, in New Haven right now. And she's been sick. But it just like makes me feel better knowing that I'm like doing something. Also, if you haven't seen in the news, there's been am amazing breakthroughs yes. with cystic fibrosis. Yes. Um, tr it's all over the news. It's all over the news. Mm -hmm. That stuff wouldn't be possible without these donations. Yes. I mean, it's only because of this funding and people's donating truly. that it allows them to have these break up breakthroughs. So you truly are uh, doing great things just by donating donating a little bit. So yeah. you can you'll you'll see the link to donate in the show description box. Um, yeah. And anywhere you can listen to a podcast. Yeah. Thank you so much. Up next, Kaylin Miller Keepies. Kaylin, how's it going? It's going. Thanks. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. So very nice of you to ask. <laughs> I, I, you might be the first person who has asked how I'm doing. No. Do you think? It, how you're doing? You can go check the tape. <laughs> I feel like there's going to be a couple of listeners and be like, oh, I'm, I'm on it. I'll go do that. <laughs> I'll go report back. Um, thank you for coming. Yeah, thank Is you. this your first podcast you've done post Paradise? Um, yes. Yeah. I think so. no, I've done um, Ben and Ashley's. Ah, sorry, classic. But it was in Vegas. We were all drinking. You know, was that something. after Paradise? Yeah. What did you guys talk about? Uh, I think that's right when Dean and I could be public. So we talked oh, a lot about me and Dean. Dean. Yeah. Talked a lot about Dean. Well, that doesn't really count. They're that's a terrible podcast. To them. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 They're friends of show. They're great. It's a wonderful. Also, show. Vanessa's not on it anymore. That's a different podcast, oh. Rochelle. <laughs> That's that's actually Dean's <laughs> and Jared's podcast. I'm a big fan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, R.I.P. Uh, did Dean fire Vanessa? What's uh, the, do you have any inside scoop for us there? What happened? Yes. Give Dean us some the dirt. plug on Vanessa. Um, no, but I think you know she's. You she, must know. She. I think her time has passed. And her time has her passed. Time, I don't know. Whoa. I'm not, Whoa. No, no, no. What? As in, she's over it. Maybe. Oh. I don't know. Come on, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean like she's doing other things and uh -huh. and and enjoying her life in Canada. And right. It's a little bit d more difficult to. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a part of it. Yeah, her time has passed. Her time, her time, passed. Her time has passed. It truly, yeah. Uh, well, enough about that. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you have all the I Heart podcast confused. With <laughs> Uh, well, we're glad to have you on. Uh, we like to uh, uh, get to know our guests on a more intimate level, especially our bachelor guests. I know like a lot of times our bachelor guests will come on other shows or do interviews, and it's a lot of bachelor heavy content of what happened this week versus that week and et cetera, et cetera. And I don't know how much um, the audience has gotten to know the real Kaylin Miller Keys. Did I say that right? Yeah. <laughs> so I uh, I want to spend some time doing that um, if you are so willing. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Let's start at the beginning when you were born. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, yeah. So you know, it's obviously you've you've had an interesting path in the past year. Um, I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, you've you felt uh, a lot of love and adoration early on, and then you had uh, some criticism, and now you're. You seem to be in a really happy place with with Dean, but it's you've had your highs and lows. Yeah. Um, and I'm curious in terms of, you know, touching on that. What what has that been like for you? And is it kind of something that you uh, did or did not anticipate when you when you did this journey? Yeah, I don't think anyone who goes on this show anticipates the hate. You do everything you can to protect yourself from that. Mm -hmm. And and I thought I was. Um, so yeah, it's nothing that I anticipated. I growing up was very shy, like couldn't talk to people, was just 
the most painfully shy person. And that's why I entered pageants was to kind of break out of that shell. And so for this like shy girl to like come into her own on national television and receive that criticism was, was, I mean, incredibly difficult. Did the criticism start for you like early on? Uh, on I mean, I guess season, that, yeah. it did. Yeah. When? Um, me and Hannah had our, you know, beef. I do. Yeah. We, we reconciled and then Cassie and I had our, um, bachelorette talks, you know, it was like oh. you and Cassie versus Tasha and, and Kerpa. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, and, and then you, you get some criticism from, from that. When yeah. you say criticism, what, what do you mean in terms of, um, was it just something you didn't expect at all or was it like nasty? Um, I didn't expect it, not because I thought I was like perfect or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize the fan base and how um, devoted they are and how passionate they are. Um, So I had no idea the fans behind it and the trolls behind that. And um, I just didn't expect like, you know, the death threats, the like, you know, just like the craziness of that. Question when you say death threats, and I've actually wondered this before because I've had other Bachelor contestants say death I have had... Has someone said to you, I'm going to kill you or you should die? Um, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot that I've gotten. Because technically, <laughs> you should die is more of a suggestion. Yes. Well, it's <laughs> not, not nice. fun. It's not, no, no, I'm not saying it's fun. <laughs> we don't need to um, split hairs here. <laughs> no, yeah, I've gotten, I've gotten it all. Okay. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> no, that sucks. I can't say I've ever gotten a death threat. And in fact, I've only heard women from the show say that they have i've never heard a guy say interesting interestingly i don't know that to be a fact i just know that i personally haven't i i remember caitlin when caitlin was the bat threat she she got a lot of criticism while the show was airing i wonder if it's because the fan base is largely women and women women tend to of other women yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's interesting so you had to deal with that yes um and then obviously uh well, before we get into paradise, I, I am curious the the Hannah B stuff. I'm yeah. a Hannah B fan. I know. Yeah. I feel like you guys. What 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 was that all about in terms of like just the pageantry? Like ultimately, you guys just what weren't the, like best friends? Yeah, or? we're just like not compatible as friends. But then, I don't know. You put us in one competitive environment, and then immediately into another competitive environment, Miss USA, and then The Bachelor, and it's just like you constantly feel like you're being pitted against one another. It's just. When you were casted for Colton season, mm-hmm. did you know she was also like yes. <laughs> going through the process? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Were you guys in communication? No. So we kind of like fell, had a falling out after Miss USA, but we both knew that each other was doing it. Did you submit yourself? Um, I, yeah, I was pushed by friends to go okay. to a casting. Okay. And you went. Oh, you yeah. went to I a went. live casting? Yeah. They were like, just go. And I was like, oh. no. And then I did it. Yeah. When did you, fun. when did you hear that Hannah B was going through it as well? Because at that point you probably didn't know or you did? Yeah. At that point I didn't. Um, but she, I was getting lunch with a friend in LA and they're like, oh, Hannah's here too. And I was like, what? So I like found out that way. Were you kind of like, oh. <laughs> I was like, crap. But then I thought a lot about it and I was like, we'll be fine. We'll be civil. It'll be great. <laughs> Seems to be a pattern for you. Yes. It'll be fine. Be great. Did, did... <laughs> then you get there and all hell breaks. Yep. So something kind of happened. We don't have, I mean, I don't want to. Um, but I'll... It was more just, it like solely is competitive environments and you're like, I don't know. That makes me sad. Yeah. No, I get it's it. It's unfortunate because if we weren't in those two environments, I feel like it, things would have been different and we wouldn't have felt that animosity towards each other. I always am a big believer, especially in competitive environments when two people don't get along, that it's usually there's more similarities with each other. Um, it's wa- commonly known that Rachel and Vanessa didn't get along in my season, right? We've you know, not to get it. And I remember joking with both of them separately. It's just like, I'm not saying you guys are like exactly the same. There's clearly differences, but y'all are like the reasons you guys are fighting. It's like the, you guys aren't that much different. Yeah. And, and there's a lot, you had a lot of similarities and you kind of butt heads with, you know, yeah. um, someone who like, you know, it's the unmovable immovable force meets the uh, whatever ob- object. But do you think you and Hannah B have some similars in that regard b- being competitive where it was like, that's why maybe you kind of butted heads and you might also, and there's a different world where you could be quite good friends. Yeah, no, I think, I think 
we definitely have our, our similarities. We're also very different, but I can totally agree with that. Um, <laughs> In what ways are you oh, different? Sure. <laughs> um, we're, she's just, I'm more quiet and reserved and she's Hannah B. And, the beast. Yeah, she's the beast. Um, but yeah, we, we were good friends. And um, I think if we weren't in those environments, it would have remained the same. Yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. I was just curious. I never, I remember, I remember watching it. It was fascinating when it was People happening. People are still curious because we never like came out and were like, she did this or she did that or I did, you know, because it wasn't that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I thought that was kind of interesting. And so then you go on. And so you were in the running, obviously, for The Bachelorette. Hannah B is chosen. Like, did that make it kind of, was it like, personally, were you like, did you feel like the competition was still going on? I mean, obviously, you were fine from it. Yeah. But, you know, to be totally honest, were you like, oh, man, it's, were you totally happy about it? Or were you like, oh, couldn't it have just been like someone else? <laughs> Like, I feel like I'm going to ask all these questions like I'm doing right now. Yeah. It's super <laughs> annoying. Um, but like, or, or were you totally over it and totally happy or, um, little, or slightly bummed? I think in the moment, it's hard to say now because I'm like so happy and sure. I know the plan that, you know, my life was supposed to have. Um, but I think in the moment when I got that call and it was like, hey, it's not you. Of course, you're like, sure. dang, that sucks. And and we all knew it was Hannah at that point. You did? Yeah. Okay. Um, because, I don't know, we just knew. We just had a feeling. You had a feeling. Um, So yeah, I was a little bit bummed. And then, but the more I thought about it, I was like, had this constant battle in my head. I was like, could I actually do this? Because I'm terrible when I'm tired. Like I should, when I'm tired, I like shut down. I don't talk to people. When I'm hangry, same thing. So it's just like, I don't know, would I actually be a good lead? Because midway through our season in my ITMs, I was just like, yeah, everything's great. Everything's good. I, whatever. I love Colton. You know, like, and that's how I would have been as the Bachelorette. I would have sucked. A, that's a very honest assessment, and I can tell you that that goes into the process of when people ask, like, when people, you know, you have your fan favorites of, oh, we want so and so to be the Bachelor, the Bachelorette, and part of it is like, can this person just deal with what we're going to ask of this person, yeah. and that is to be on for. 18 hours a day for eight to nine weeks in a very stressful environment. And we, they, they just can't emotionally shut down. Mm -hmm. That's really, really hard. And, and me, so. I don't tap into my emotions like ever. Mm -hmm. So I think that was my challenge on The Bachelor. It's like constantly tapping in and it's like, oh my God, I don't want to talk about this. Like now we're talking about my stepdad and like I have to tell him that he's my dad. And, and it's just, you know, I just constantly tapping into that was exhausting enough. So when you say you don't tap into your emotions, you just don't like talking about like intimate personal things. Yeah, <laughs> it's a problem. Oh, because oh, it didn't co it doesn't come off that way. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah you seem very emotionally available. Oh, uh, I'm not. <laughs> oh, interesting. So, and that's more just talking about things because I mean I think what Rochelle's getting at, and I would agree, is that you know it's like you were you cried, you were emotional, you weren't yeah. you weren't like. You didn't come across as a robot by any means on the show, yeah. but it's more talking about kind of, is it like, is it a, I'm just guessing here, so correct me if I'm wrong, is it more like it's easy to talk about some things, but other things yeah. you have completely closed off? I think it used to be like anything at all and going on the show broke down a lot of barriers for me because mm -hmm. um, like I'm not one to cry in public. I'm not one to like sh emote basically. So it was just breaking down those barriers. And I don't know, I just feel weird talking about like my emotions. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, because like I just read stuff online. It seemed like some people were like accusing you of faking emotions. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to hear that you don't even like feeling emotional. Yeah. And wouldn't, you know, I just get uncomfortable. So maybe that's like the fakeness that comes out. I don't know. It can. I mean, um, if, yeah, if you're not comfortable with it. Um, before, like, and you, I was, you said something about the pageantry, why, why you got into it in terms of you were shy. I mean, and then I think sometimes within pageants, people get criticized of the, you know, even Hannah's really good at that grin. I mean, I've seen her in Dancer of Stars. And I sometimes, one thing I always forgot to do because I was so nervous is smile while dancing. And I went there. <laughs> Hannah's just like a fucking pro. It's yeah. just like, how does she know how to do that? And I'm like, oh, the pageant. Yeah. You know, in terms of, but you get that criticism mm -hmm. of kind of coming across disingenuous. And like, uh, is that, do you think it stems from that or the combination of you 
not being wanting, not wanting to talk about it. And then you have the pageant training so much. Yeah, I think it's both of those things. Also not being comfortable in my own skin. When I went on the show, I was 23 and 24 now. And so, but even just that year of growth, like so much yeah. I've grown into myself and, and dating Dean, like he's just made me embrace the weirdness about myself and like the quirks and, and it's like, I don't need to be perfect. I'm not perfect. Like that's very obvious and apparent. No one is. But do you and, think you tried to be yes. perfect? Yeah, on the don't show. I, I, or I even still, before. I mean, I mean, God, all about being a pageant queen, the, yeah. at least from an outsider's point of view, is the idea of perfection. Yeah. Of this talent and well-spoken and giving right. back. And, you, you carry the, it, I don't know. I started when I was 15 and it carried this weight with me throughout the past almost decade. Liquid IV. I'll tell you what, uh, it's been a really big... Uh, benefit to me i uh, i indulged a little bit with the holidays the halloween so i went to a few parties i don't normally go to and yeah. while i didn't drink too much i just had uh, uh some liquid IV before and after and i felt fresh and revived no way that's awesome well the best part is it's like drinking two to three bottles of water yeah why wouldn't you do it it's just like it's it's healthy you get a bunch of vitamin c b3 how does it work I mean, I'm not the sign. No, but you you just like have a packet. Yeah, you, you have a packet. You pour you? It, you pour it in a glass. I mean, I put it in a glass of water. You yeah. can have a bottle and carry it around with you. I have a liquid IV like container, sort of like a travel thing. Yeah. So I can do. I just prefer like to drink it all at once. Yes. But like you just pour the. It's super simple. You, yeah. You take it, the packet, pour in the water, you mix it up, Amazing. and it's like having I like shooting up a uh, liquid I literally liquid IV in your arms. Yeah. But just as easy as drinking a glass of water. That's awesome. Um. It's it's TCA friendly. You can take that on a plane. Smart. Yes. Right. You get so dehydrated on planes. And then you have a little sealed pack, and then you ask for water on the plane and pour it yeah. in there. Again, super simple. The thing Boom, I like hydrated. is that it's clean ingredients, so you're not putting weird stuff in your body. You're literally helping your body. And tastes good. Yeah. Go to liquidiv.com and enter my promo code VIALL to get your savings and start getting better hydration. That's liquidiv.com, promo code VIALL. Don't wait. Start properly hydrating today, which, by the way, is hard to do. It is. Hydrating properly. Especially when you're on the go. I need all the help I can get. Thank you, Liquid IV. <laughs> Ancestry. Ancestry. We are. We are anxiously awaiting our results. We both spit into these vials right next to each other. It was other. super easy, by the way, and not as disgusting as it sounds. Right. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, we were doing like wait. a minute. I can't wait. I, I, I get asked all the time, what am I? And I'm just like, oh, I don't know. I mean, like a, you a get month. asked all the time, what are you? Yeah. Uh, it's like, a, it, I, I feel like I do. More times than I would. I think it's just a common question. Com yeah, it is. I don't, it's like if you don't have anything else to yeah. talk about. Uh, like is it, how's the weather? Well, it's sunny in LA. Oh, like, oh, uh, what is you your... Italian or Italian? What? It's like, I don't, I hope, I don't know. I'm hoping for a little <laughs> bit of s something surprising. If it both comes back and we're both like... Maybe like half French, Western half European. English. Western European, yeah. It'd be so boring. Uh, I'm hoping for a little, I'm hoping for surpri a surprise. I'll let you guys know when I find out. But we're going to get our results right before the holidays, which is great because... Guess what I'm going to talk about, family. Yeah. Here's what we are. Because you know what's funny is that none of my family members have done this yet. Oh, really? Not to my knowledge. I bought this as a gift for my parents because it's a meaningful gift. It's not like uh, an iPhone or an yeah. uh, Apple Watch that will become obsolete in the next year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not our heritage. Right. Yeah. Save big on Ancestry DNA with special holiday pricing and spark meaningful conversations around the holiday dinner table, as we mentioned. Give the gift that can unwrap their history. Head to my URL at Ancestry.com slash podcast to get your Ancestry DNA kit on sale today. That's Ancestry.com slash podcast. Yeah. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. There's not a segment in the uh, beauty pageant of like bad habits. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you it's know? Like, let's embrace the uh, bad uh, <laughs> Like, tell me the things that are like, tell me something you do that's kind of nasty, you know? <laughs> Like I'm yeah, filthy. I'm filthy. I, I leave. I leave milk in the sink. It's disgusting. Honestly, until there's flies in the sink, I won't clean it. Yeah. Like that's really real. Congratulations, you won. Yeah. Like you don't have that pageant, you know. Yeah. Um, and so yes, you. And you. You're obviously a very beautiful woman. You seem like I guess that perfect image. But it's. It sounds like it's safe to say that. Maybe, maybe even still now and certainly going into the show, you had a lot of insecurities. Mm -hmm. 
Definitely. And I think the insecurities that I felt, you know, going back to like me and Hannah's previous, you know, it's been like a year since we reckon it has actually been a year since we reconciled. But I think my insecurities were kind of drawn out in that as well, which is pretty obvious. What what are some of your insecurities? Um, I think because I was shy my whole life, like that's a huge insecurity of mine. Like people who can kind of overpower the room and, mm -hmm. and just talk so openly and freely. I, I was envious of that because I would always be kind of like meek in the corner and, and just like watching from a distance. Um, I don't know. I've got a lot. I mean, we're, we're here. <laughs> There's some <laughs> physicals. I was bullied a lot in high okay. school. So I think, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, people, I gotta say, when you can admit your insecurities, people quite find that to be yeah. uh, uh, relatable, and um, it's it's always. I mean, massive. yeah, I relate to what you're saying. If you're a more introverted person, more of an observer, it makes sense that you would. I well, it's something I and mean, we've talked about in another show is that you're a pretty person, right? You're quiet, and sometimes people will like do. Have you been criticized of being a bitch before? Yes. Yes. Or like the resting bitch phase, yeah. the quiet per the quiet pretty girl. Have you been accused of you think you're better than us yes. at times throughout uh -huh. your life? Yeah. To a T. Yeah, and it's not that I like. I am an observer. Like I just like to sit back and watch. Even still, I'm not like in that shy phase in my life. But still, I like to just kind of watch what's going on around me. Um, but also, there are times where there's people in a room who are all like so good at interacting with everyone, mm -hmm. and that's when I those insecurities come out again and I just get quiet and people are like, she's a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Social anxiety. <laughs> yeah. And then it almost, it tends to get worse and worse. Yeah. yeah. Why aren't you having fun? Oh Have some God. fun. <laughs> Have some, why aren't you having fun? Are you not having fun here? <laughs> yeah. Be more fun. Uh, <laughs> I can relate to that a little bit. Um, do you, are, are there ever situations where you can be the life of the party? Um, or is it, is it, is that something you really struggle with? I've never like considered myself like the life of the party, you know, you put like two glasses of wine to me, then I like start talking more and my inhibitions <laughs> are down and I'm like, whatever. Um, but I, I don't know. I think too much before I speak and I'm always like, you think, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the same way. Yeah. I, I think a lot of head. people, that's a very relatable thing too. Yeah. Um, like especially you know if you're if you're not chatty at a party there must be something yeah. wrong with you. It's just like <laughs> I'm fine. The only thing that's not fine is you trying to get me to be like you in this very moment, yeah. and it's really bothering me. And now I feel worse. <laughs> Which uh, is funny because Dean, like we're both we both need our time alone, and we're both I don't know. He's more of an extrovert than I am, but we both are just like need to be alone at times. And he'll get really quiet. And I'm like, ah, he needs to be away from me. Like he's had enough of me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what's wrong? What's wrong? Like, why aren't you having fun? And I do that exact thing. And I've never even thought of it from his perspective. Well, when you're in the van together, you don't have much yeah. space. And I'm like, I'm like just staring at him. He's like, go away. <laughs> well, I feel, I mean, like in any relationship there, again, the people who go to parties, it's not like they're, it, it's a... I mean, a defense mechanism too. I mean, maybe on their side, it's just like I'm, they're dancing a fool at a party and then see the other person. And again, like you have your, you're, you're thinking, you're in your head thinking about God knows what, but yeah. here's this girl and maybe it's a guy. He, you know, he finds you traditionally attractive and he's just like dancing a fool. And then, I mean, he sees the per you staying in a room, just kind of like no emotion on your face. And he just is going to assume Oh, she thinks I'm an idiot. Yeah. So then his de defense mechanism me mechanism might to be to go up to you, and it's kind of a neg, you know. Why don't you have any fun? But like I'm having fun, have fun like me. And they're truly probably more or less being. I don't want to feel judged because yeah. was I acting like an idiot for the past five minutes dancing to like <laughs> call me maybe? Yeah. Um, and I think there's a little bit of that. I think we're all just kind of projecting. And in relationships, I think we do that a lot too. It's just like we're constantly checking in for validation, probably. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I would agree. I am. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I, we have to talk a little bit about the Blake stuff. <laughs> um, I have been, um, I guess if there, I were to pick a team, Team Caitlin, versus, I've been very, Appreciate everyone that. knows I've been very critical of, of Blake. Um, <laughs> But, you know, I, I do want to kind of understand, um, you know, you had your criticism too. And there seems to still be a lot of he said, she said. I was actually, uh, I, I was on The Bachelor Happy Hour. I think it drops maybe this week, I don't, you know, with Rachel. And we were talking about how I'm having you on. And she had Blake on. And she told me to listen to that episode. And I did. And I still kind of rolled my eyes a little bit. <laughs> 
Um, and even on that episode, there was still a lot of like t- discussions about timeline and stuff like that. And I didn't really quite care or whatever, but, um, as you, now that it's over, mm-hmm. right. You're, it's over. You're in a relationship with Dean. I guess the, maybe the thing I'm most interested in is what are your kind of takeaways from that whole experience in terms of not so much what Blake did wrong and why are you right? But what are things that you think maybe you've learned from that experience that if you could do it over again, what do you think you would have done differently? Um, I think like the main takeaway that I have from this whole situation, as terrible as it was, is, I don't know, I just want to be a better communicator and I think we can all be better communicators because so me and my best friends, we talk about this. We're like, am I like building this up to be more than it is? Like in mm-hmm. and, and just little situations, like whether it be, you know, with a stranger, a best friend, whatever. Um, and it's like, we need to be better communicators and see both sides. Cause even you look at um, Nicole and um, Nicole's drama. Angela. Nicole's drama with Angela. Why did I, I'm tired. No, it's okay. <laughs> I was like, who was she fighting with? Um, Angela. It was yes. So long ago. Are, are you worried in that moment if you're going to get shit for not remembering people you're on the show with? No, no, no. It's not that I don't remember Some Angela. Some person would be like, that Kaylin bitch didn't even remember her. No. No, it was, uh, I couldn't remember who she was having beef with. Of course, Clay's ex girlfriend. Yes. It's fine. I don't remember either. I don't. <laughs> Thank God it's over, right? No, did you, but like trolls will have a, oh, well, yes. they'll find yeah. something to bitch about. Anyways, um, go ahead. But yeah, so with them, you know, if Nicole and Nicole's been vocal about this, that's why I feel like I can talk about it. If she had been a better communicator and talked to Angela, she would have seen Angela's side. If I would have been a better communicator with Blake and been like, this is exactly how I'm feeling versus hiding away and feeling like, a, I don't know, like an obsessed girl or a heartbroken girl, which is how I was feeling. And that's kind of why I um, and I can be more stoic and I hide my feelings. Mm-hmm. But if I just would have opened up and been honest, I think things would have obviously played out differently. When you when you say be honest, what do you mean? What do you think you weren't honest about, if anything? I feel like I was honest, but from Blake's perspective, he says that he had no idea where my feelings were at. I I, I, I want to dive into just a little bit because my understanding, and I do feel like you know, as things go and people things are sent in the the show and then their social media and then there there were the posts, mm-hmm. and I I remember like you know. Even my friends and fans, when people would come up to me and tell me their opinion, there'd always be this little discussion. And it, mm-hmm. I found that there seemed to be a lot of different interpretations of what the story was. Right. But that's with every fuckboy situation. Sure. <laughs> callers. We yeah. callers call in and totally. we're like, you my, always tell them, communicate. Yeah. My understanding of the situation, and it, was, it wasn't even so much about stagecoach, is that you guys hung out for a period of time. Mm-hmm. I remember in, in, on, on Rachel's... Uh, the happy hour podcast it was like how many times did you guys facebook it was like i don't know FaceTime. a lot facetime facebook did I say, whatever because <laughs> blake was like oh we only did 12 and kaylin, well, kaylin said they did it multiple times a day i'm like well 12 is a, i don't know <laughs> whatever did he go back and count i'm confused I don't, it doesn't matter <laughs> it doesn't matter it doesn't matter um but, so you guys talked mm-hmm. and whatever and so there were feelings you got there was some hooking up a little bit and then it then it ended mm-hmm. And did it end abruptly for you? And that was my interpretation is that you guys dated, it stopped. You felt like, you used the word ghosted. Mm -hmm. Did he, was he not returning your calls at a period of time where you were like, hey, I want to hang out and you just didn't hear from him? Yes. So we were talking for a couple months and things, you know, I I really did think I was communicating properly. I was like, I like you. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm in bachelorette talks. If this were to happen, what would this look like for us? If, you know, whether it, there were multiple, you know, options being thrown out there. Um, and it was something that was even making him sad. I remember we were on the phone and, and he was like, well, this sucks because I do like you. And if you were to just like leave, I don't know. So there were multiple conversations being happening. And I, I was I've, like, had, I've had those conversations. Yeah. And it's like, well, what if I don't go on? You know, we, the, all sure. every possibility was thrown out there. Um, so then we are FaceTiming constantly, whatever, 12 times, 24 times, who knows? I didn't count. More than twice. <laughs> More than twice. We were, we were FaceTiming every day. Um, and then I see a photo of him with another Bachelor contestant, a female, at a bar. And she I was like, remain unnamed. she will remain, remain unnamed. Let's name her. Come on. <laughs> Christina? What? Who, who, who was it? Uh, 
I feel like people no Every, people know people know right I don't know yeah except uh, for me I literally don't know that's why maybe I, just, I shouldn't why not I don't know who is it <laughs> no I shouldn't it's fun or this there's it's a more fun. fun there's people a picture will figure out it there. out people will find it yeah yeah <laughs> is there a picture on the internet of this thing yeah I mean then, I can Google it is it a secret <laughs> I don't know let her go so it's Fine. just a, it's just a female um. And I was like, oh, that's weird. That kind of sucks. Okay. I remember FaceTiming him and he was like, weird. He wouldn't answer my FaceTimes. Um, mm. And then from there, it was just like, so here's where I lacked communication. Typically, I'm like, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's, mm -hmm. you know, what's going on? Or I saw this. I didn't want to be that crazy girl. I saw this photo of you sure. with another woman. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm always that girl. I'm just going to take a step back. Like you if he cool. really is, if he really is like, you know, hooking up with this girl or seeing her while he's seeing me, you know what? He's not my guy. So I'm just gonna, you know, take a step back. And I was still like trying to like text and follow up, but it was like, you know, basically zero communication back, no FaceTimes. Um, so he wasn't responding. Right. There may be like a, a one word in here, like, hey, like at 6 p.m. when I texted you at like nine, you know, like, sure. and then it's like the next day. It's like a soft I'm ghost. I'm like, yep. what's soft up? Ghost. Yes, a soft ghost, not a full ghost. Sure. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> but no FaceTime, so I don't know. Okay. And then, and then just, and then you just kind of accepted that reality and you guys stopped talking kind of thing where it was it, like, he's not, he's yeah. not reaching out to me. So you what? And it just, so there was no like closure. It's no, like, there was no closure. So I would, I think I tried to face him a couple times, like in the days following after that. And there were those like one text a day, you know, like I would send one, he would send one. And then the next day, you know, one per. Um, and so there's no closure. And I was like, all right, whatever, you know, let's move on. It's, he's not my guy. Um, and then he called me, I guess, I don't remember when he called me and was like, why'd you ghost me? And I was like, what? I did not ghost you. Um, and Wait, so why did he, he accused you of ghosting. Oh, yeah. So strong, strong <laughs> fuckboy move. Yes. On that, Blake's part. Right out of the playbook. Right there. out of the playbook. <laughs> Turn the tables. So then I feel guilty and I'm like, what? Me? Yeah. No, I, I really liked you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Strong move, fuckboy Blake. <laughs> so, yeah, we had the conversation and he expressed, he thought, when was this? How long, long before Stagecoach? Um, maybe a month or a couple weeks before Stagecoach. Okay, sure. Um, so I explained my side of things. And I still didn't bring up that nameless woman because I just didn't want to seem petty. Who I just, everyone but me knows. <laughs> nameless. This is going to be hyped up to be more than it is. It's really not a big yeah, deal. I know soon. Gonna be, I will be like, oh, yeah, okay. I've heard. Um, so then he told me he thought I was just, once I found out I wasn't The Bachelorette, I didn't need him anymore is what he said. And I was like, I feel like, and this is what I said in return. Wait, is that wait, he said that once you weren't named the Bachelorette, you didn't need him anymore? Yeah. Uh -huh. that, doesn't, that literally doesn't yeah. make sense. For like advice, but I mean, for it advice. was- For advice, okay. Oh. That's- But I wasn't, I don't know. I mean, like, I mean, I, yeah, I got Blake went through the process too, but it's not like he's the oracle of <laughs> how to be the bachelor. Yeah. Uh, so, and I explained my side of things and I was like, I feel like you got scared of your feelings. And when I wasn't named the bachelorette, you were like, oh no, this could be something. And you backed off. Mm -hmm. And so that I find, I did tell him that in that moment. Um, and he was like, no, no, no. And so we ended that conversation on a good note. And I thought we were going to, he's like, okay, let's talk tomorrow. So I thought, we were picking things up. Like we both felt like there was mm -hmm. ghosting on one another's um, sides. And so I FaceTimed him the next day. I was trying to text him and it was just like a nothing. So okay. then we saw each other at stage coach and that's when everything happened. Well, he mentioned something because I listened to Rachel's podcast about there was like, you know, the whole living situation and you mm -hmm. reached out and kind of was like, and he said he, he didn't, he might have told Colton like, hey, it's kind of be weird if she's there, which I guess I get, especially yeah. if you want to hook up with other people. <laughs> um, I mean, and no criticism. But like, <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah. I mean, like yeah. it's someone you used to date and you're yeah. like, you don't really know if you're going to have a bunch of sex, but like, hey, <laughs> it is a festival. You want to keep it open. <laughs> One can only hope. <laughs> One can only hope. Um, and so, and then, then you go to stagecoach, you have some drinks, you get a little horned up. Mm -hmm. you know 2 a.m text yes which that was the problem i had just to, about the releasing of the text is that doesn't necessarily say anything other than the fact that 
Well, you hooked up, you which were, everyone you knows. You were drunk and hooked up, but it doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that no one, no one ever doubted your interest in in Blake and mm-hmm. the fact that you did per, pursue it. You know, I think it, it was that it seemed like he didn't want to, and that you were like trying really hard. Yeah, you know? I get but that. it's also a text message; you can't really tell. I get that, yeah. and even though that's the case, it's like, well, it's not like you kicked his door down and forced <laughs> yourself on him. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Um, what do you think about that? Um. Uh, it's just I don't know I think he, we talked on the phone before you released the text messages I was like dude if you want to like clear your name and say this like whatever I was like there are phone conversations there are text messages like from both of our sides like that I'm not going to release so that like this isn't fair but if you want to do this and I know it's set in your heart whatever but you don't need to release the 2am drunk text messages like yeah. you just don't was there a time when you were guys having this kind of almost seemingly negotiation about whether he was going to <laughs> release these text release messages? The tapes. Because that was my also criticism. I get it. Like, listen, like, it's fair to say, and would you agree that some of the uh, phrases you chose to use on Paradise might have come across as a bit strong? And like the, the you silenced me comment, I think Blake kind of references that in terms of he feels like you were kind of accusing him of, you know, we're we're in we're in sensitive times in 2019. With things like the Me Too movement mm-hmm. and stuff like that, and and everyone's kind of a bit on edge on that. And at at it, it, he came across as kind of suggesting that you were accusing him of of aggressive behavior mm-hmm. in terms of or you know in terms of the silencing yeah. part. Um, w- would you agree that maybe that was a poor choice of words? Um, or do you feel I like mean, he I'm, did try to silence you? No, no, no. I, I'm very sensitive to this, obviously. Obviously, yeah. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I, I don't know. I guess like with drinks and me, I got more heated than I, than I ever really felt. In um, paradise? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And so I think I was just, what I was most upset about was that he, he did want to kind of hide me. He was like ashamed of me. I, I, like again, when I. I got that. It was yeah. more like once you said that phrase, it like kind of almost took on a life of its own in a sense yeah. of like, and we talk about it in the show. We have a lot of people who call in the idea of like, he used me for sex, you know, other mm-hmm. callers and this idea of like, you just want to hook up with me and now you want to pretend it didn't happen and things like that. Yeah. And I think a lot of women relate to that situation, right? Mm-hmm. It was just more like, that specific that. phrase was like a trigger phrase for some people. And I think they weren't focused on that very relatable situation yeah. of what you were seemingly trying to express. And then it seemed like you were, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. It was more, I, that's the impression I got. And I feel yeah. like, because I hear that a lot when when I'm talking and debating with people with the Kalen versus Blake thing, mm-hmm. people will bring that up almost, if they are, if they're kind of arguing in Blake's favor, mm-hmm. they will bring that up every time like, yeah. well she said he silenced her and it's that will be this phrase and yeah. i'm like yeah and they, they were they're saying in a way of uh, uh, in that sense yeah and, I, it, and then i'm like well like haven't you been in a situation where you feel like you hooked up with a guy and he didn't want anyone to know about it and yeah. it made you feel kind of stupid and that's what it was it wasn't you know the way people are interpreting it and i wish i didn't use that word um but also like I'm in my own head where I know every detail of what's happened. And so I'm thinking of it this way. And then the internet turns it into something that it wasn't. And that's yeah. really unfortunate. So yeah, I wish I didn't use that specific word. Yeah, I mean, again, it's not the end. Of, it, it became, it's felt like I'm sure the end of the world at yes. the moment. And again, I've always was criti- critical of, of Blake releasing the text, not because you were 100% right and he was 100% wrong, but like once you do that, it takes on a whole life of its own, mm-hmm. completely out of context. And I guess my, my original question was when you guys were negotiating about this, were there ever a talk of, like, oh, fine, listen, I understand you're getting heat and you don't deserve it, but like, did he give you a chance or were you willing to maybe say, have you say something about like, hey, listen, like, I know I said this in paradise, but like, Blake's not a bad guy. I was frustrated and I and I stand by my frustration, but like, he is not some, the, some of these interpretations of the show, like I maybe have misspoke or mm-hmm. poor choice of words was that yeah. ever discussed between you two yeah i mean i talked to him i was like listen like you know there are things in there that i feel like are unfair towards you there's you know only so much that can air in all the conversations that we have and i talked to multiple people about this like i'm sorry that 
you know, you're getting, I don't know. There's, I apologized for mm -hmm. a lot and. Before he released the text. Before he yeah. did. And I was like, if you want me to do an interview, if you want to do a joint interview, oh, if yeah. you want me to release it. I mean, I said all these things. Wow. And See, it, I think that's very interesting. Yeah. We talked about it on the reunion and he was like, why would I, I still haven't watched the reunion, so I don't know if this has got aired, but he was like, why would I um, trust you to do an interview or trust you to do that if you've said, and I was like, like, come on. <laughs> so I don't know. He just never really gave me that opportunity, which I would have, I think I told him, I was like, there's a better way for us to handle this. There is 1000% yeah. a better way. That was kind of my opinion is like, I felt for, you know, I get it. Like I, if I were in Blake's shoes and like, I would have gotten very defensive in that situation in paradise. If right. I were in Blake's shoes versus you, you know, and I'm sure I've, you know, hooked up with a girl and she felt like I, I maybe I'm sure I've communicated poorly, you know, where she felt like I didn't acknowledge um, what happened as much as she would have liked to. I'm, I'm certain that and throughout my life that's happened and I would have felt defensive, but to that mm -hmm. point, having removed yourself and again, keep in mind that happened in while filming. Now we're talking what, two months later, mm -hmm. now it's being aired and now there's reactions. So it's not as if in that moment he was reacting to the reaction of the show. And then again, it's interesting to hear you wanting to have this, like figure out a way to resolve this because I guess you could have just been like silent. You could have yeah. not re reached out. And it was, it's not like, let me cover my ass. Let me like do this. I talked to him about multiple things and I was like, I don't know. There's like things I can say and can't say, but I don't know. I just, I know that there's a better way to handle it and it was mishandled and I get, you know, the way he was feeling. I, because mm -hmm. I, you know, once he released those, I was trapped in that same exact corner that he was in, that he was now suddenly like a little bit released from. I was thrown into that corner and I was, you know, felt like my world was crumbling, felt like I didn't want to live anymore, felt like mm. just horrible about myself. Like I was like, am I really like I remember waking up and I was like, am I truly this horrible, horrific person like mm -hmm. that people are constantly bashing me? And I don't know. I, I get it. I get what he was feeling because I was. I, f I felt the same Yeah, thing. it is interesting because like you, both you and Blake have talked about just the kind of at your worst mm -hmm. mental health wise via the show. It, you guys kind of tell the same story, which yeah. is kind of interesting in the fact that when you talk about early on this, the show or a few minutes ago, considering the other point of view and the other side before reacting. And that's, that is a lesson to be learned for all of us in terms, there definitely is, is always an other side yeah. because like, again, I don't think Blake's a bad guy at all. You know, um, this is not like he, it's just an unfortunate situation that snowballed and probably could have been handled much better by, by both parties. Yeah. Um, so, and would you say you've learned a lot obviously from this, this whole experience? Yeah, I, it's funny, I thought I grew from The Bachelor and like the criticism that I received then, but the, how much I've grown since, like it was hell. I mean, it, there, it was absolute hell, but I'm so happy with the person I am today and the way I'm able to communicate today. And just, I am much more aware of like, my flaws. I've always been aware of them, but now I am quick to address them and be upfront and forthcoming with them. Interesting. And for someone who's, you've kind of said who's in your head a lot and overthink and yet, but some of the things you've learned is to try to think or be more thoughtful before you react about something emotionally. How do you deal with that? Because it's a, I would see it seem to be a challenge for someone who's already overthinking, but for someone who overthinks, do you think you, when you get really emotional for someone who's not used to expressing their emotion, you were responding too quickly that yeah in that sense does that make sense yeah i think that's when the overthinking stops and i just kind of say what i feel in the moment in the heat of the moment and um i don't know yeah interesting well i mean i really appreciate you sharing and I, I know that's not always easy um you and dean now we're in a happier time <laughs> everything's fine we've had dean on uh, a few uh, uh weeks ago I mean, it's obviously like Dean's a good friend of mine. It's a interest, fascinating dynamic. And from what I, a little bit I know about you and a lot I know about Dean, it seems to be a interesting relationship. And I think, <laughs> how do you think so you spoke cute. to a, a little bit about it? 
how are you guys uh, helping each other out? What effect are you having on him, do you think? And obviously you spoke a little bit about the effect he's having on you, but can you speak a little bit more to that? Yeah, um, it's funny because people, I think, were betting and everyone was like, they're going to be the first to go. Like, they're never going to laugh. Really? And there's a time even that I, he recently I wanna, spoke about this. I mean, that, <laughs> that's fair. I was taking that bet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe, no, I would have... Tayshaun Juan Paul, John Paul Jones. Really? Really? I would have. Yeah. And then a second. A close, <laughs> a close second. Um, and it's funny because he just recently spoke and he was like, Caitlin was a little bit scared of me um, when we traveled. So we got off the show and immediately went to Europe together. He bought me a flight to Spain. He's like, sorry, I dumped you on your birthday. No Here's way. Here's a flight to Spain. Um, what a romantic. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and that trip in Europe, I was treating our relationship like it was on the beach where he was like, I don't want a relationship. I want nothing to do with this. I'm very non-traditional. So I was like, if I say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing, he's going to leave. Oh no, I hate that. Oh. Yeah. So I was like walking on eggshells the whole time in Europe and I'm like, what do you want? Like kind of like bowing down to yeah, him, you know? Dean had all the power. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> but that same with um, Blake too. You didn't want to define it or. Yeah. You know? Well, it's t I mean, and listen, Dean kind of even when I was, when I found out you guys are dating, I was even like, Really? Because I didn't think Dean was, and Dean even said this, I didn't think Dean was going to leave Bachelor in Paradise in a relationship yeah. uh, at all. Right. <laughs> and then when he was, it was kind of like, the joke was, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm going to date Kaylin, but like, hey, Kaylin, I'm, this is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And if you're okay with it, we can date. Yes. he. Which he I guess is honest, but also puts you in a really tough spot. Yeah. He would, yeah, exactly. And so that was a little bit challenging. And then at some point in our relationship, I was like, if I'm actually gonna date this guy, like I need to date him and not be scared of him and be my full self because that's not fair to either of mm, us. True. If it ends and I'm like, I didn't even try. I was scared of the guy the whole time. That's That sucks. So then finally we just, I don't know, our relationship developed and we became more and more comfortable. And now I feel like I can say and do whatever I want. I talk about us getting married like three times a day <laughs> just to scare him purely because I know like, that's oh, you fuck with him. Oh, yeah. Great. <laughs> Healthy. And I, my lease is up in March. And I'm like, so when we move in together, <laughs> do you want an RV or a home? <laughs> um, and I don't know. We've I think we've learned a lot from each other. I know I've learned a ton. I've grown into a new version of myself and a version that I like so much more. And I challenge him, too. And I don't know. It's a very unique relationship that people wouldn't expect to work, but it does. I mean, I, I get it. I mean, again, for you've, you've talked about some of your insecurities and how you are. And I do think in that way, Dean could be a, a really great partner for you. Mm -hmm. I what I like most about Dean and we've talked about this. He is a, he has his own insecurities, but he's, he's willing to talk about, it. he's very open. He's, uh, he doesn't, he's not a conformist. And mm -hmm. I think so much, especially in this world, we often do what we just think everyone else will be happy with us doing. Right. Um, and then we kind of lose ourselves by just, you know, as, you know, like, especially if, well, I'll just tweet this because, or I'll say this because that's what will get the the most positive reaction. And right. then all of a sudden you're like, why am I doing this? And Dean has never been like that. And I'm assuming that has an interesting impact on, on you. Yeah. So for the first time in my life, and I'm so thankful that I've had him through all of this paradise stuff, because I think if I ended up with someone who's just all about their perfect image, and they would have left me immediately. And and Dean stuck by my side and through the horrible times. Um, and I'm very thankful for that. But he's also made me realize like, it's okay to not be perfect. Like embrace your quirks. Like you don't show the right side of your face. You think it's less photogenic, like show it. Um, but also like the weird sides of me and and embracing like the no makeup. And I don't know, It's it's been a very interesting transition. What have you done for him other than giving him shit? Like what are some <laughs> things that you think Dean could work on, and there are plenty. Uh, what are the things that you think you have a positive impact on him early in this relationship? Um, I think about that a lot, because I'm like, you obviously challenged me a ton. I'm like, what am I doing for you? But I think he's becoming more vulnerable a little bit. We both are, because we both mm -hmm. suck at it. I think he's becoming more vulnerable than I am, and um, just, he's always very honest, and he's a really good communicator. I don't know what I've taught him, though. I don't know. How to be in a relationship? How to, be, how to date? Yeah, maybe that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you have. Yeah. If you haven't, I, I would challenge you to challenge him yeah. more. Because like Dean's great, but mm -hmm. he's not. 
What about being on time? Are you often on time? Because yeah. Ian's never on fucking time. That's what's stressing How is me his out. tardiness with you? Oh, so we we went to an event together through their day, and his manager was like, "I think he's only early because of you. We were thirty minutes early." Oh. Um, but I get really stressed if I'm late. Like today was very stressed. He's on time. He's never on time. He's so. never on time, but he is. So that's yeah. a wit. That's a huge wit. Yeah. yeah. So there's there's one thing we're working on. He'll just. It's like we have to be somewhere at six. It's five forty, and he's just scrolling on Instagram, and I'm like, "What are you doing? Like we gotta <laughs> go." And he just has no sense of urgency. And I told him this the other day. I was like, "You know, I really admire that you're never in a rush for anything, but like sometimes you gotta." You got to go somewhere. You got to be somewhere. Dean has admitted to me how incredibly selfish he can be. Mm -hmm. Do you think with you, you've got like, you must feel like he's obviously considering your feelings more. I think that's that's um, a huge thing that's changed. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people wouldn't, who have dated Dean or even have friends with Dean. I, I love Dean and he can, he's a big heart and a sweet yeah. person. But even, and like, that's what I love about Dean is be like, yeah, I'm, I, People just put up with me. Yeah, you know, yeah, they like my eyes, and so they'll put up with me. Uh, I mean, he says it jokingly, but he, there's a level of truth to that. Oh yeah. And yet, I feel like you f you're starting to feel like he's making you feel like he is really truly considering. Yeah. You. Yeah, that's that's one thing that's changed drastically from that time in Europe to our relationship now. It really does feel like a partnership versus me just catering to him. Um, he does think of me, and he like like you said has the biggest heart and. He he treats me very very well. I think people would not be surprised to know that, but like he has a really good boyfriend. Yeah, I always got a little defensive of Dean because obviously the whole like fuck, you like cause sure sure he can have his, be a fuck boy. I'm yeah. sure he has been a fuck boy. He'll admit to that, <laughs> yeah. but he also is a, a a great guy. And again, I Blake, I'm sure Blake will will make a great boyfriend to the person he mm -hmm. you know settles down with. You know, yeah. um, and so yes, but Dean is. It doesn't surprise me that Dean is a what, great boyfriend. What kinds yeah. of stuff does he do? Um, he's just really thoughtful. Like when we, so when we're traveling, he always has one day where he's like, I've had enough. I need to like go hike um, at sunset. So while I'm sleeping in bed, like he'll wake me up with Starbucks and bagels or just like little things like that. But um, I was in church and he dropped me off, me and Christian. And he comes to pick me up and he always gets on me for not washing my car because I hate going to the car wash. And he's like, do you notice your car's washed? So while I was in church, he washed my car for me. Did you at that point say like, have you washed your hair or your <laughs> armpits? Because when's like- the last time you've showered? When's the last time you showered? Because <laughs> you hop in with you the car? kind of smell a little bit. <laughs> he doesn't smell uh, his armpits, but- <laughs> he, For a guy who barely showers, he's got pretty good body odor, but it's- it's it's impressive. So he but did, I've uh, he's he's stunk before. I've just his, just his body too, or just his armpits. His armpits. Yeah, yeah. And he'll yeah, give me like a hug. I'm like Jesus, bro. Those get bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, he's really great. He's really thoughtful. I think it's just ironic that he criticizes you for washing <laughs> <Yeah>. your car. <laughs> That's true, actually. <laughs> and he can't even wash his body. <laughs> But when you travel with him, you sleep in the van? Yeah, him. so we just traveled to a wedding together and um, our Airbnb fell through. They didn't let us check in. It was this whole ordeal. And I was like, let's just sleep in the van. And my the bride was like, sleep in this casita for the night. And then the next night I was like, we don't need a hotel. Like, let's sleep in the van. And he's like, no, we need a hotel. I need to get ready for the wedding, like in a hotel. I was like, no, let's sleep in the van. And so now it's become this thing where I'm, I like sleeping in it more than he does. Oh, it's cute. Is he getting sick of it? I don't think so, no. You don't think so? No. But I, mean, I gave it like six months. He's past six months. Yeah. He said he would last a year, so June. But then because I want to move in with him, he was like, um, I'm going to do another year in the van. So ah. we'll see. You do want to move in with him? I joke. I mean, maybe. <laughs> you joke. In but... terms of in terms of saving money, a one bedroom would be cheaper with two people. No. If, if, <laughs> if I could give you advice that you did not ask for. Yes, please. Uh... If you want to move in, then great. Don't do it to save money. A yeah. couple cameos, a few <laughs> Fat Fit Fun deals that's, that'll save your relationship. I know. Um, money should not be the excuse why. Well, also, the more I fall in I've love with the I've done that before. Van, it didn't go well. Really? And it's never the reason you I want think, to do like, it. maybe if we're, I don't know, if we're going strong a year from the next March, maybe we'll get an RV together. Who knows? I'm making this up. But. Leave it open-ended, yeah. but just don't do it for the money. Yeah. If that's your number one reason why it makes sense, don't do it. I know. And that's okay. Yeah. You, just, you, you can still spend a lot of time together. Yeah. 
it, 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 it tends to put a lot of uh, false expectations on relationships I have found. Yeah, I do think it'd be. Well, now we're living together. What does that mean? Yeah. Uh, I think we, in this relationship especially, we, like, we need to take our time. And yeah, you guys are, how long have you been dating for? Four or five months Yeah. Now. Yeah. It's, it's early. super early. <laughs> so much to learn about each other. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, thank you for uh, being so open and honest. We have one more little fun game we like to play with our guests, awesome. if you are so inclined yeah, to do. Yeah, let's do it. Do you know me? Do we know Kaylin? These questions have been selected by Rochelle. I always put that disclaimer on there. Some of them have been sexual in nature. <laughs> I only, that's why I say it. Uh, we're, Rochelle and I are going to guess who knows you better. Okay. I'm going to read this question. Uh, don't answer okay. quite yet out loud. We're going to guess. Perfect. And then feel free to explain your answer. If there's an anecdotal story behind it, you're open to share. Awesome. Question number one. Has Kaylin ever ridden a mechanical bull? And by mechanical bull, we don't mean Dean. Uh, <laughs> uh, has Kaylin ever ridden a mechanical bull? Yeah, for sure. She's uh, from the South-ish. Is North Carolina the South? Yeah. yeah North Carolina. Carolina's the South. Yeah. She was in a soror- uh, we didn't find out anything about her childhood. Were you in a <laughs> sorority? I don't know. I because say t- this is a great time to talk about our childhood. Maybe we'll find out through um, this question. <laughs> I'm gonna say because she is a little bit of an observer. Being on a mechanical bull is a v- you, very vulnerable thing to do because you know you might look like a fool. I'm gonna say she passed on it. She's watched a lot of girls. That's do a great. It. That's a great. <laughs> I, you know what? You're probably right. She has. Can't change your answer. <laughs> I won't change my answer just for fun. But yes, that's probably a better guess that you've been to plenty of bars where they've been mechanical <laughs> but balls. But haven't done it. And you've watched a lot of other girls do it and you kind of wanted to do it, but never <laughs> did. And you were just like having these conversations with yourself. Kaylin, oh, why don't you just do it? <laughs> I don't know. People might, I don't know. What, how will this what look? What if I how, look dumb? What if I look dumb? <laughs> and so you never did. You're and fully in my head now. Yeah. Um, I have. You have. Oh! I win. <laughs> yep. oh, beach yeah. week in, uh, in high school. We had like a beach week where in once you graduate, you, you all go to South Carolina to the beach. And how fun. On how, uh, eight seconds? Did you stay on the bowl for eight seconds? Not long. Maybe like two. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty long. I have found, I have I went on one once. I have found that the people who tend to, to, to control the mechanical bulls are male. Uh, uh, and when a guy mm-hmm. annoyingly goes on the mechanical bull, you can pretty much knock off anyone in a matter of seconds. And they're like, fuck this guy. And they just throw him <laughs> off. And with the women, they tend to like, you let in, them go a little slower. <laughs> and after, after they get a little confidence, they throw them off. That's were so you, funny. Were you popular in high school? Um, Dean and I were just having this conversation. He was like, no wonder you got bullied in high school. Um, <laughs> but I was like friends with all, like probably like five different groups oh, cool. and I never really belonged to one, but I would kind of like. Could, were you, did people tease you for being in pageants in high school? Um, or was that a normal thing? Yeah, no, they teased me a lot until I won. I won my senior year at oh, teen oh, division. Yeah. And then every, all of the popular girls wanted to be my friend suddenly. Oof, yeah. Fuck them. <laughs> Has Kaylin ever had bangs? <laughs> well, there are options here. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm certain she hasn't had corn rolls or a bowl cut, but have you ever had bangs? Uh, yeah. Ever? Sure. I'm going to say no. Her face is too perfect. She wouldn't, oh. she wouldn't cover it up with bangs. Uh, I'm going to say yeah. Um, do they mean like these type of bangs? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I had, remember when that... What what was that phase called? Side bangs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they like fully went. I had those. Like covered up like an eye. Yes. What hey, was that? Two nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Me, you? Yeah. I don't think that counts. Side bangs. Are like, I had is to, like, bangs in the word? Blow. You know, like uh, push them out of my hair. Yes. Constantly. constantly. Yes. You're just yes. Like, yes. Fine. I'll give two it nothing. to you. <laughs> Has Kaylin ever been in a fist fight? <laughs> Mm, yes. What age that pageant think? world gets. <laughs> I mean, I, listen, I think <laughs> yeah. it would make a great story, but I do not think she's actually hit another woman. Or grabbed after, their hair? Over the age of eight? Yeah. 
No. What is the answer? I don't know if this counts. I, I want Rochelle to be right. But so. Tasha and I got into <gasps> a fight on a date. So it was like physical, like fighting. There and was I got like, punched it was the, in the face. It was the boxing date. Yeah, yeah. It was, oh, yeah that doesn't count. That okay. Doesn't then count. that's it. Yeah. No. <laughs> but were you like hitting her like you were mad? I can't remember. Um, no, but. It was the date that the Demi like got yeah. to ask. Yeah, but let her answer. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> Just um, references. It was like. They were like, three, two, one. And Tasha just, bam, straight in my face. And I was like, oh. a little shocked for a bit. But yeah, I tried to give it back. I, but she's taller than me. So I ended up just like punching her boobs. And she's like, stop. Have you ever wanted to hit a girl at a pageant? No, I'm not like a physical person. Yeah. What's your dark side? I just get really angry. Mm. But I internalize it. <laughs> As I, crack my I would love to know the worst thing Kaylin's thought about doing to someone. <laughs> I won't make you answer that, but I feel like it could be dark. dark in there. I feel like it could be dark. There's, you know, uh, three nothing. Why do you got to rub it in my Not, face? <laughs> I'm just, I don't know. Did Kaylin ride a limo to prom? Right? Yes. 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 I don't know. Huh? What do you mean you don't know? Um, you don't remember. Did you go to prom? Yeah. How'd you get there? I don't know. Um, were you drunk? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you at your first drink? Uh, 17, 16. You throw up? Yeah, I had a Fort Loco. Oof. What's that? What? What? <laughs> it's an energy drink mixed with alcohol. illegal now. They had to take the energy out because yeah. it's it an was... actual like pre-made drink or is it yeah. like something? They still Damn. sell them. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's terrible. Wow. Final question. Can Kaylin drive a stick shift? And again, not Dean's dick. No. <laughs> no. Mm. Uh, no. No. Um, I'm learning. Oh. Dean, teaching you. Dean um, will use the pedals and he'll tell me I'll do the stick shift. I'm learning. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Is he a good teacher? Is he a good teacher? Well, because every country, <laughs> every country we go to, it's always stick shift. Aww. And so he has to drive and I feel really bad. Every country we go to. <laughs> what a hard life. What a, so relatable. <laughs> every, you know, in our travels around the world because we're... Aww. We're trying to figure out our presets for Instagram. <laughs> what are your presets, Kaylin? Um, so I use the Tezza app. I'm obsessed with it. Ooh. I and use Lightroom because of Amanda Stanton. I use her presets. Oh, no way. You do? Yeah. See, Dean has his presets in Lightroom. He made his own? I think so. Or he just does them each the Can same way. Can you share your presets with me? My presets? Yeah. Oh, I don't have it. I don't. Oh, I yeah. mean, hey, I'm always looking for a good new. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're pretty good. A good new preset. But yeah, so. When I first started dating Dean, he oversaturated his photos like an insane amount. And I was like, you, you got to stop doing that. Like all of your photos look fake. And so now if you look at his Instagram, it's slowly changed and it's less fake looking. See, so you can another see the way you helped him out <laughs> monetarily. Yeah. Um, I could... I could use a good Instagram girlfriend. <laughs> he is a great Instagram sure boyfriend, I will say. Nick. He um, is a great photographer. So I know that this picture of you guys in the van. Oh, oh, that that was a that was like your coming out photo. Yeah, Aww. Pleasure Town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great. Who took that, by the way? Friend. Um, his roommate. Oh, or his old his roommate. van roommate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was like, "Hey, meet us in Venice right now. We're gonna take a photo." Cute. Aw, aw, yeah, that's like that's like my backyard. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Kaylin, thanks so much for coming. Thank this you. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, thank you for being so open and honest and vulnerable. And hopefully this is the last time you'll have to discuss Blake. But I feel like now we really oh. had a chance to talk about it. Sometimes when you, you know, the interviews that we, we get to do in Batch Nation or come across as more soundbite-ish and it's mm -hmm. always, think of the full story. Yeah. You know? I haven't talked about it since... Since it happened, so this felt like the right you time. You haven't? Mm -mm. Oh my god! This is really good for our podcast. <laughs> I just have to say, well, we uh, people call in with 
questions about dating. I just feel like it's a difficult time in general with these like new rules and like you don't, you want to be the cool girl and not say anything, but you still feel hurt and, but you haven't established anything. It's like hard for everyone. Yeah, it really, yeah. Thanks for saying Rochelle. And I, yeah, you, we do to Rochelle's point. We, it's, it's a fine line early in a dating situation uh, to try to be the cool chick. It's, I feel like a lot of, and it's more women, women feel like, I want to be the cool chick because I don't want to be the crazy chick. Yes. And yes. they feel like they have to decide between the two. There's no middle ground. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, so I'm either going to come across as like a crazy chick <laughs> or I'm going to get walked all over because yep. I just want to be super chill and super yeah. cool. Yep. And I, and, uh, we're all struggling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a fine line. And we are here on Vile Files to let you know you don't have to choose between the two. You can, you can say it, what you want. Yeah. You can There's say what balance. you want and just, don't be, you know, <laughs> just don't be like, oh my God, you know, just be like, hey, that's just curious because like, it's a great time to maybe check in of what are we? Because yeah, if that's what you want to do, that's totally cool. Yeah. But I think I do, women have a fear, ask. even if we're like, I don't know, we're just us communicating our feelings. We have yes. a fear that we're going to come across crazy, even yes. if it's very level headed, very chill. I don't know. Yeah. It's just a fear that we have. Yeah. It, it is interesting though, too, because I, don't get me wrong. I have been in relationships where I have had the thought, why are you acting so crazy? <laughs> I mean, I have. But at the times, it was because it was a, what felt like a non-rational thought. Mm-hmm. But like, I think it's totally rational to ask what's going on yeah. in this situation. I'm confused based off of what we've been doing. Mm-hmm. It was more, that seems reasonable. It, yeah. And then again, for me, it was more like in relationships where we get in an argument and then we're just like, we're 30 minutes into this argument. And it was like, okay, I don't even know what we're arguing. That's always a little bit different. Mm-hmm. But I think early in a relationship when uh, there is a lot of confusion. Yes. Like asking, agree. checking in and asking what's up mm-hmm. because that's not crazy. Yeah. You know? And I think, you know, the, when we were joking about the, the fuck my move Blake did when he turned it on, it's <laughs> like, you know, like men probably do play off that fear that women have of, well, I'll just call you crazy. I'll mm-hmm. just say you're being irrational in a, what, for a very rational question. Yeah. Because I, I've never experienced that with a girl early in a dating situation. It's always been in relationships mm-hmm. when we're arguing and emotions are heated and we know each other's like, yeah. uh, idiosyncrasies and it's just like we're just fighting we're not trying to solve any problem Mm -hmm. and that's very different than you know early in a dating situation we're like wait okay i guess i mean we haven't defined the relationship but like oh you're hanging out with another girl okay i don't want to be maybe it's just a friend but like i need to ask yeah that's interesting very relatable so thank you for sharing i think probably a lot of people will continue to relate to that situation and i just want to thank you personally just for being so brave for standing up against um, yeah, assault and sharing your story. And I don't think most people realize how hard that is and courageous. And so thank I want to thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank it's, you. <laughs> thanks, I mean, guys. it means more from her. But. No, thank no, you. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to sit there and be like, you know, I think it's great that you do. And I do think we still are in a world where sometimes when you do, you're it, it's always going to be met for, always, with criticism. Always. It's always going to be met yeah. from the people who unfairly will assume that you have alternative motives or, and mm-hmm. things like that. And it's, I don't think it's ever been met with, uh, uh, without criticism. Yeah. So I think it's, uh, just going back to the Blake stuff one more time. It's, it's hard once you've been through a situation like that to be open about your sexual history or present sexual you know, whatever is going on in your life, because suddenly people see you as this victim, whether you portray yourself as a victim or not, people see you as a victim and you have to remain abstinent for the rest of your life, basically in their eyes until you're married. And so I think um, that's why I was more sensitive to this. And Blake was receiving the heat that he did because of what I've been through, um, which is unfair. You know, what I've been through doesn't make me a victim and and, and I'm allowed to have... Mm-hmm. And that's an interesting <laughs> you know? point, just like you were open about that on Colton season, mm-hmm. your history, and then you had this situation with Blake. And it, yeah, I guess it's interesting that people then probably interpret that maybe different than they would had you not been so open on Colton season, yeah. right? In terms of like, oh, is she doing that? You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah. And that's fascinating. And it sucks that 
you know, again, choosing to be open is met with uh, unfair consequences of uh, how people interpret your, the things you do going forward. But for sure. so as Rochelle said, thank you for being so open and, and, and brave. And I know it's not easy. Thank you guys. For but also thanks for telling us about Dean. Yeah. Fun and lighthearted. <laughs> what a, what an episode full of, uh, all different emotions. <laughs> I love it. Uh, as always, guys, thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to rate us five stars. That's the only star we want. Uh, your objective <gasps> opinions are not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't forget to send us your questions at uh, asknick at castmedia.com for uh, Ask Nick or Questions with Nick or whatever we call it on Monday. Thanks for listening. See you on Monday. Have a great day. <laughs>